Welcome to today's podcast. Today we have Tim Gershio on the show, and I hope I, I said that correctly, Tim. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Sally. Great. And so I know a little bit about you and your background, but our listeners don't. So can you just give a, a brief history about uh, your background? Yeah, I am Mongolian American. I was born in Mongolia and moved here to the States when I was six. And I'm currently in Charlotte, North Carolina and been here ever since. But at the end of this month, I'm planning on moving to or well, we're moving to Los Angeles. So it should be really fun. I grew up playing soccer all my life, played college and played pro and for the Mongolian national team. And um, after my soccer career or after one season, two years in Mongolia, I was trying to decide if I wanted to continue playing soccer or if I wanted to go finish my college degree or start my businesses. So I started my businesses. And now after a couple of businesses, I have a successful lighting company in which we specialize in Christmas lighting. And um, yeah, we do about seven figures annually. And it's a nice little side hustle, I guess people like to call it. Well, and especially, you know, wintertime, North Carolina, I'm sure there's a, a lot of people that don't really want to be outside hanging up a bunch of Christmas lights. And if they can have somebody else do it, they would prefer to. Yeah, from from my being in the industry, I don't think anybody <laughs> typically wants to put all their lights up, maybe a Christmas tree here and there. But yeah, there is a people basically hire us to put up their lights for them. Excellent. And so you said that um, that you moved to the United States when you were six, but then you were playing professional um, football or soccer, as some people say. Um, now, did you move back to Mongolia when you were doing that or did you play for, for the national team but still spent a lot of time in the U.S.? How did that work? Yeah, Mongolia isn't the most prestigious uh, soccer country. So the way they work is you have to be living in Mongolia and playing in their league and everything to be considered to play for the national team. So I lived there for two years after spending uh, about 20 here in the States. And that so it was really be, awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and very, very different. I'm sure culturally and lifestyle, things are, are quite different uh, between the United States and Mongolia. Very much so, yeah. Mongolia is, I guess you can still consider it somewhat of a more more so of a third world country. And um, I'm very grateful to be in America. And some people don't realize how grateful it is. You should, gr grateful you should be just to have like a bathroom in your house that works properly. Right. There's there's a, a lot of things that uh, we're not grateful for, for, for living in developed and, and Western countries. Mm -hmm. So, so now you're going to be moving um, to the West Coast. And so are you planning to expand your, your business as well to the West Coast as you move? Yeah, we're actually, we get demand nationally already. So we get demand all over the place. And we're a little unique. We provide an awesome service, but also an experience as well. So our workers, we have elf hats and have elf uh, <laughs> uniforms and we get to raise up the Christmas spirit a little bit more. So that's really awesome. So that's kind of helped us to stick out. But we also really just care about the customers as well. And uh, we're like an all-inclusive in terms of my business. We're an all-inclusive package. So people hire us. We provide all the lights, everything, the design, and we'll come up there. We'll put everything up for them. And then any issues they have during the season, we'll fix it for them. Of, with no charge. And then at the end of the season, come January, we bring everything down, store for the year, and then they just hire us again next year. Oh, wow. So that's that's very convenient. So they don't even have to go buy lights or deal with untangling them all. And then all of a sudden it doesn't work because there's one bulb somewhere in the string that doesn't work. Exactly. Yeah. And we're like, we're like outlining your roof line and getting up there and doing all these different things that you could definitely tell when something's professionally done versus someone that kind of did it themselves. So nothing on, right. any, nothing on people that install their lights on their own. I still, I still love Christmas, no, I guess. You could say. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's great. <laughs> um, I just, 
myself thinking of being on the ladders in the colds. Um, it, uh, yeah, it just does not, does not sound fun to me. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. And I'm originally from Canada. So I know oh, okay. December colds. Oh winter, yeah. Terrible. Um, oh yeah. So, so that's definitely not, not, uh, not something. I love the lights. I'm glad people do it. I absolutely love them all, but um, I would uh, be having somebody do it for me because I'm definitely not doing it myself. My inside my house though is always crazy. So yeah, inside so, nice. Yeah. So what um, for yourself? What have you found has have been some of your biggest challenges with business? Uh, there's so many. I guess there's just so <laughs> many ways you can go about it. But you know, it's at the end of the day, it's a lifestyle. It's a commitment. And it's almost a commitment to yourself and a journey of just wanting to progress yourself as a person and professionally uh, every day and just being able to sacrifice a lot of things, really honing in on what your core values or what your mission is in life, whether it's financial freedom or you don't want a boss or you just want to do this on your own. Uh, you really have to feel strongly about that because it will test you in a lot of different ways. Absolutely, it will. So then how how did you decide to start this type of business? Because there's many things that could be, let's say, more comfortable with, I'm just thinking of temperature, being on ladders, all of that type of thing. You know, there, there's a lot more considerations of just than being, you know, self-employed where you could have um a job inside where it's more and more office type job and and doing all kinds of things so how did you decide on the Christmas lighting company yeah first I started off with a digital marketing company and I uh found the power of just how great digital assets or website or you know having a great online presence could be and then from there I started some service-based businesses like cleaning and you know, web design and stuff. Um, and one thing led to another. I saw somebody putting up Christmas lights and I've just loved Christmas my whole life. I started doing it as well. And I already had some high-end clients. And after a while, we get we got so much demand and we get so much demand every year that we just can't even get to it all. So one of the greatest things about Christmas lighting is the demand. <laughs> and then... Um, yeah, there was times where I had to install and maybe there's times where I might have to. We have like big shopping centers and stuff, but, um, you know, it just, it, it worked. After all my different businesses, I realized Christmas was like really just fulfilling for me. It brought me a lot of joy and it was profitable and scalable. So it was just like hitting on all my boxes that I wanted as a human and as a business owner. And that's that's great because a lot of times it's it's hard to to tick all of the boxes. There's usually a little bit of a balance, maybe of of give and take um, for some people, um, which which is fine. That that's kind of a normal thing. But to to find something that really ticks all those boxes is is fantastic. Yeah, and it's like sometimes it's a good thing and a bad thing, but we can live if we wanted to, and we most of the time we do. I have full-time employees and seasonal employees we can literally just not work for six months of the year and I get to do other things and travel and enjoy life or just stress myself out about not having other things to do but luckily we make enough money um, that I'm, I'm able to do that and continue to grow as well mm -hmm. and and that's true and as you said now that you've been growing so much so I'm, I'm <laughs> sure that initially you know, you, when you started out, there was some some places you were setting up lights, and then there's the, in the off time, shall we call it, that there's all the the background stuff, the marketing, the finding the storage, the buying more lights, the all of the things that need to do. Maybe thinking of different designs for kind of yeah. average houses and and all of that. So then you have the, all of those things in mind. So it's still um, to the point you are now. It's a long process to get to get to where you are now. Yeah. It allows us to work really hard. It's almost like it's like a like a sports season. We work really hard for a couple months and we're able to be blessed with a couple months <clears throat> break and just start strategizing and planning and preparing on how we could continue to be better and continue to grow. 
<clears throat> Excellent. That's fantastic. So what um, what are some of the ways that you have or what some of the things that you've done to increase profitability within the company? Yeah, I had to. Um, so whenever whenever you're starting, whether you're a new entrepreneur or you're an entrepreneur already or business owner already and wanting to scale, like as the business scales or as the business grows, you're going to need to grow as a leader as well. So if you don't know how to do one thing, you're either going to have to depend on somebody else to do it, which is fine. You hire people or you bring on partners or you have to learn how to do that yourself and get coaches and different leaders to help you teach you that aspect that you might not know because they have the experience. So one of the things that I've done over the years is invested probably a hundred thousand dollars in different coaching programs, professional selling certificates, all this stuff, uh, basically just invested in myself and in the business. Right. Because that's, um, it's, it's a quicker, a quicker way to, to really get that end result because, you know, I know a lot of people have, um, we'll say a little bit of an issue of letting things go or, or counting on somebody else because I think by the time I train them, by the time I do this, it's, oh, it's just easier if I just do it myself. And yes, maybe one or two times it might be easier and quicker, but then if you hire the right person or have the right coach, they can show you how to do things faster um, and, and find the right talent faster where then eventually you can depend on them and, and not have to worry about it. Exactly. <clears throat> One thing it's like, you can bring people on and they can help you build your business. But if you're not the leader, or if you don't support them the way they need to be supported, like you can't just bring somebody on and be like, all right, take care of sales. They're like, okay, like, I, I understand I can do sales, but there's so much more. There's more support that I do need. So I can understand what you need from me, what you need from the business. And so you do need to have I guess those leadership skills and some of those documents in your business to be able to bring people on properly. Absolutely. I was um, just listening to a, a podcast the other day and they were saying just the similar type thing that people might go and, and find somebody to hire for sales. And they're, they're, they're a pretty good salesperson. Um, and, and it's one of two things, either they just find it because of an ad and they're usually pretty good, but then eventually they're not so good. And, and it's not that they're not good. It's just that they haven't been shown what should be done. Like they don't know, like you said earlier, the core values of the company, why things are being done, how, how different steps of things are being done. Just because I'm, if I'm a salesperson for your lighting company, I still need to know the process and the procedures and how everybody does other things. And that's going to help me sell to clients, not just, hey, you want some Christmas lights put up? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, so getting that, that learning and training and, and you're right, you have to be a good leader because even good salespeople and good people for anything, whether it's sales or um, anything else, they're only as good as their leader is. Yeah, that's so true. So <laughs> very, very important to, to do that. And as you said, to invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. Great. So um what would you say when you're hiring somebody, where, where are places that you kind of look for different areas? Because you do have a few different businesses. So if you are hiring, how, what's kind of your process or where do you find is the best areas to look to find um, great talent? Yeah, I guess like, man, that I guess I'll say this, like, it's at the end of the day, we all have beliefs that we end up believing and that we end up saying, so you have this certain belief and then you live or work around that belief where really like people are making it work past that. So for instance, someone's like, oh, you know, I can't find, I can't, I can't find workers on Indeed or so, and stuff. It's like, oh, I can't ever find good workers. Okay. That's a belief you have. Other people have found good workers. Other people are building great businesses with five kids. Other people aren't successful with five kids. So at the end of the day, it becomes like this belief that you have. But yeah, we found we found great workers on, I mean, even virtual assistants. Like 
I had this belief I couldn't sell Christmas lights via my phone only. And now we're just like, we're selling $200,000 deals over a Zoom call, you know, in, a, in another state. Mm -hmm. So if you have this belief that, oh yeah, for sales, I need to be in front of that person and I have to be there or else it's not, it's, it's not going to close. It's like, yes, maybe it might help in certain situations and maybe I didn't and this person did. But if you have this belief that if whatever you end up believing is what your kind of reality, I guess, is. So that was a very, um, psychic, I, I don't even know, very no. big brain or like <laughs> different way to think about it, but yeah. But it, it, it no, it's, it's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. There's um, a saying, and I can't remember who said it, but it goes, whether you think you can or you think you can't, either way, you're right. And mm. so it comes back to that, to that mindset. So if they, if we say, oh, as you said, I can never find anybody off this site or off um, LinkedIn or, or Fiverr or all of these different, different things. But there are thousands of people who've been hired and have gotten great employees off of all of those platforms. Exactly. Yeah. And I think too, sometimes, as we said earlier, that the, the problem could be not so much it's where the person's looking is how are you, how are you posting your, your post? How are you interviewing the person? What types of questions are you asking? And all of those things um, can, can help you get the, the right person. And, you know, sometimes it ends up being just a bad hire or the person ends up going through some stuff in life and doesn't work out as well as initially planned, but that's... <laughs> again, part of the, the learning process and, and the, the leadership process. Exactly. Two things I'm, I'll say about that is when you're a business owner, the, basically you're just making investments and you're hoping for the best and you try to support people or staff. And sometimes they're just not going to be it. Or maybe you didn't help support them. And maybe you pick, and the, what's that saying? They say it's like, you know, a bad hire costs you more than a good hire because mm -hmm. you train, like it takes so much time to train somebody, get them on board, get them going. And then you do all these interviews to try to see if you can be a good fit and they're a good fit. And then three months later, they're just like, okay, no, we can't do it. And then you spend it all this time and resources and money supporting them. Like I've paid for salespeople that's came in or employees that's came in got them different courses and all this stuff, $20,000. And just like that, it's like, all right, I just spent $20,000 to invest in this person. And he's gone just like that. There we go. And there goes $20,000 plus whatever else, you know, all my time and everything. So it's, it's all a, all an investment. And then you were saying, um, so one thing that I do, it's like, yeah, it goes back to the leader. Like you're doing, you're posting all these things, but are you really doing it correctly? Or it, at the end of the day, it always comes back to you. Like you have all these problems in your business or in your life. And at the end of the day, yes, maybe some things are that other person and maybe they're not a good fit and you need to be self-aware and realize that if that's the case. But at the end of the day, it comes back to you. Are you being a good leader? Did you have good supporting documents? Did you have a process for this person to come in and follow or are they just wearing 50 different hats doing 50 different things basically just reacting off of whatever you tell them that day so one thing that i try to do when i think of a new hire is okay step one is okay what is it what is their job description so mm -hmm. i'll I have, we have a job description we'll put it in a template and say okay these are the main three tasks this is their salary. This is what their work expectations are. These are the results that they need to bring. And then from there, I have to create them a process or like a, a board in which, hey, these are these are like the checklists that you have to do in a day or in a month or whatever the results may be. These are the things that you need to get done with your SOPs or your K K I P K KPI, <laughs> key partners, and whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. But this allows you to create a standard for your worker or your person. And then this person also knows what they're going to be doing when they come in as well. 
And then from there, now you have everything you need. You got the job description, you got a process for them to follow. Now you find that right person. And if you, if it's a simple process, which it should be, they shouldn't have to be doing calculus to figure out what they're doing. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are step one, step two, step, this is what you're doing. I just need you to do it. And if you have a good process, you can literally just bring anybody in and they'll be able to do it typically. Right. Yeah. It, it reminds me of um, a comment that I've heard many times from um, Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm not sure if you're aware of him, but he and he always says, if somebody's not a good worker, it's my fault. It comes back to me. If somebody messes up or does something bad, it's my fault. It comes back to me. And it is truly taking responsibility. Now, I, I believe that probably about 80 to 90 percent of the time, because sometimes people do just totally mess up and they knew better yeah um yeah. but but you're right most times it is if if somebody's hiring it's what needs to be done not just well i need to hire somebody for social media <laughs> okay great well i'm just going to hire a social media expert it's like okay but what are your expectations because what they right. perhaps have done for other companies and has worked well and has been fine for the other companies might not be what you want or your expectations are and it could be just the types of posts, how long they are, is it daily, is it three a day, like all of those things and and having all of those procedures in place, as you said, makes it easy that if, if there is um, a breakdown or something is not working out, then you can go back and say, okay, is it the person? Did I not train them properly? Did I do something wrong? Did I mm. tell them something different? Mm -hmm. what, I, I, what I meant to say um, or is it in those steps, those procedures that uh, that we've messed up and there's something different or or something has just changed from one year to another to reevaluate those things? Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and so I guess if, um, for for people who are maybe on the fence about starting a business, we, we you know, there, there's lots of people now who are getting to more the, the side hustles, <laughs> the you know, maybe they're not jumping full in and, and quitting their job and they're, they're doing something and they're not quite sure really what they want to do or they have several ideas. So it's kind of one of those, you know, on, on opposite ends of the spectrum, though. What would be your kind of tips or recommendations to them to get started? Yeah, first of all, like, first of all, that's really great that anybody or you or is deciding to do that. Most people, they're not willing to come home from work and put in an extra even hour or 30 minutes to building something for them. And for someone to have a will to do that, that's just the, you know, first step. And that's really great. That's all it, that's, that's the first step. Then from there, depending on, it depends on what, First, like what you want to do, how much money you want to make, and then you have to create demand or does it have demand already? Because if you're like, hey, I am a pinky toe scratcher. It's like no one's searching for a pinky toe scratcher, you know? <laughs> right. You have to have, you have to do something that you're solving some kind of problem that a lot of people have. Or if it's a small amount of people, you have to be able to charge a lot for it because there's smaller demand and you have to make a living trying to do that smaller demand thing. thing. Oh, okay. Sorry. It broke up a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah. So do something that's in demand that you think you will enjoy. And if you, whatever your business idea is, ask me and Sally and we'll, we'll give you our two cents or our thoughts about it. And, and I think that's a great tip that you that you said to them is even if you're you're doing like a half hour a day after work during the week, and maybe you can do a little bit more on the weekends or whatever, depending upon what people's work schedule is. But even that couple of hours a day, really, I know some people that just think, well, I just don't have time. Like the average person watches four hours of TV every single day. And so even if you took half of that, because I get after work and people are stressed and you just want to just chill out and do nothing and think nothing. So even if you spend an hour watching TV or two hours watching TV, if you can take that additional hour or two hours and, and focus on, on doing 
something on your, your list, like make a list of what you want to do, all the tasks that need to do that you need to do to get it. And that one to two hours every day really does add up over time. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, 10, 12 hours right away. If like, if you're not working and, and you're solely just jumping into it, great, you can do that. But even those additional couple of hours just to start can really get you going far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then having a systematic, like it gets overwhelming, mm -hmm. even something as simple as having a podcast and having someone come in it. There's so many steps that it, it involves that it can literally get overwhelming. So you need to have a system. So that's why courses are really great or programs because they have a system of getting an end result every usually at the same time same end result every time so you if you don't know how to start a business look up on google how to start a business 10 steps to starting a business and don't overwhelm yourself go from one to ten and do the next best next thing in the process don't think about oh man i'm on one i'm on one and i gotta do seven eight nine it's so like no just do the next most possible action you can you can do that that's actually really really good because you're right with with every everything even just having a podcast some people just think oh i can start a podcast i just have to get guests and record it and put it up on youtube or spotify or whichever platform but there's actually a lot more work to it than that and mm. and that's that's like every business there there are a lot more and it can once you realize all the things that need to be done for whichever your business is it can get overwhelming. Um, I've been self-employed for, oh gosh, like 25 years almost. So a, a very long time. And even sometimes too, when I'm starting something new, I, I still get overwhelmed and I'm used to it. And I, I need to know that I have to tell myself, okay, wait, let's just stop for a second and step back and then start going through, okay, what are the things? Write them out. These are the steps that I need to do. And then if I forget something, obviously insert that in there. Oh yeah, I got to do that first. And then go through and that really does help clarify what you're doing. And especially if, if you have less amount of time and it's only a few hours each night um, or, or throughout the week, then, you know, it's like, oh, OK, instead of sitting, oh, what do I have to do now? What do I have to? You can just go and say, OK, I have an hour. This is what I need to do next. And tomorrow I have two hours. So tomorrow this is the next thing I need to do and, mm -hmm. and help get that process mm -hmm. moving forward. Yeah. So then it really comes down to how bad do you really want whatever you're chasing for? It's like the, my why, or I guess my thing is mm -hmm. I'm an immigrant. My mom basically sacrificed her livelihood, her culture, her country to give me an opportunity in life. I'm, maybe she had other, but that's how I see it. And it's mm -hmm. like every day I work hard and I get motivated to be able to take my family to go do wonderful things. And I have think like, I, I look forward to the future where I can pay for everything and pay for them to go and do vacations that, you know, people dream about. And that's what really motivates me. Having the why they say is one of the most important, if not actually the number one reason to being successful in, in, a, in having a business, because it, it is a lot of work and, oh, yeah. and is, it is, quite a bit of of sacrifice um yes. everything give and take even oh yeah I've done tons of travel writing for for several years and everyone's like it's great and it is like there's so many benefits to it and, and it is so great but there's so many times I missed out on birthdays and events and different things it's like oh no I'm gonna be here I'm gonna be there so it's mm -hmm. not how does that say the the grass isn't always greener on the other side? Because once you hop over that fence, you you see all the the dead spots, the dying spots, the not so great spots. Um, oh yeah, and that's with business. Every business has issues and problems and things that we have to sacrifice and give up to have that end result. So what is that? Why? Yeah, and business is like basically your business ends up being a reflection of you, reflection of you in your life so right. everything that's going on in your life both physical and internal or external and internal it's going to show in your business and that's why you have to work on becoming the best person and the best leader 
you can be. And that is, I think, a great spot to end this um, podcast on is being that gr- the best person you can be. So if somebody wanted to get a hold of you because they need some Christmas lights set up um, across the United States, anywhere, how would they get in touch with you? Yeah, I actually have a coaching, like a Christmas lighting coaching program coming out probably oh, in the wow. next couple months. I started it this past Christmas or this past winter and it went really great and i'm looking forward to i guess partnering or showing other people how to build a six to seven figure christmas light company installation company and then uh, i also have a sales course coming out here in the next uh month or so hopefully by the end of the month it's been a work in progress just like everything so Mm -hmm. you can reach me on my instagram or facebook or linkedin tim gershio uh, Asian guy, you'll see. Yeah. We'll, we'll we'll put we'll put links in. We'll put some links in the show notes. So, so yeah, can, I'm sure I'm the only Asian guy that has the name Tim Gershio. So uh, you'll you'll notice. Anyway, uh, yeah, my website timgershio.com. Uh, I also yeah I'm yeah there there we go. So they, okay. Yeah. Well, perfect. Well, thank you very much for your time, Tim. It was great speaking with you, and I'm sure the listeners got some valuable information. Yeah. Reach out to me and Sally anytime you need anything. I'd be more than happy. So many people have fed into me over the years and I'm so grateful. And I hope that I can help uh, feed into others just like others have fed into me. Thanks, guys. Great. Thank you.